So in this segment, we're going to be thinking about the significance of learning outcomes and learning objectives for course assessment. Um, one of the things to emphasize early on is that the reason we really focus on learning outcomes for assessment processes is that summative grades, so if we're thinking about um, how many students received A, B, C, D, F for the course, while can lead us to bigger questions and summative grades can get us to think about different sort of research projects. Um, on their own, summative grades typically aren't actionable data, uh, meaning that we can't look at how many students got A, B, C, and D and get a good sense of where to go next, um, what the next steps are in terms of revising the course, um, removing barriers for students. Outcomes data, on the other hand, looking at how students performed on particular learning outcomes, um, where they struggled, where their successes were, can do a much better job than summative grades at informing decisions we make. Additionally, one of the other reasons we want to think about really focusing on what makes for effectively written course outcomes is that in addition to effective course outcomes really benefiting faculty and instructors, that um, you're given a kind of a roadmap of the major assignments, the main topics to focus on in the class. Additionally, whenever equity or whenever learning outcomes are really poorly written, it actually can create kind of an equity barrier for students in the sense that um, when outcomes are poorly written, they often don't give students a sense of what success in those outcomes actually look like. Um, making it harder for students to know what the course is actually driving at and what success will look like for that course. Additionally, when outcomes are poorly written and not relevant to students, it makes it more of a challenge for students to think about the significance of the course um, for their career, for their community interactions, and for their further studies. And so we really want to focus on writing uh, outcomes effectively to set up instructors for success with an assessment and students for success within the class. When we think about effectively written outcomes, um, four characteristics often come up, um, qualities that are common across outcomes when they're written really well. One is that the outcome will be very specific in that it's not gonna be just a general sort of course topic. Um, it's not gonna be sort of a full field of study, but we'll focus on a particular element of the course topic, a particular skill, particular concepts for students to be able to master by the end of the class. A second thing we think about is, effective outcomes are written in a way that the main action verb, what students are doing, what students are knowing, is written in a way that can be observed and can be measured. And so we think about that in the sense of outcome verbs being things like prepare, apply, analyze, evaluate, describe, define, all kinds of verbs that we can actually witness somebody doing to be able to grade and give feedback on. The um, Opposite of that would be the thing that's often um, advised against when writing learning outcomes is having the word, oh, that students will understand or students will know. The challenge being that it can be hard to observe somebody understanding, to measure somebody's knowing, apart from them demonstrating that um, in a particular way. And so really want outcomes to be written in a way that the action verb, again, is something that you can see, something you can measure, something you can observe on an assignment. Third thing is that it's actually achievable. What that means is that given the resources of the class, including the time of the class, how long it is, um, the material students have to work with, that the outcome is something that students can actually be expected to achieve by the end of the class. And fourthly, um, we want to think about effective outcomes being written in a way that emphasizes their relevance. And we can take relevance to mean that students from reading the outcome can determine why that particular outcome isn't considered within the class, how it's relevant to the course topic, as well as to go a step further there to think about relevance to students as well. That doesn't have to necessarily mean relevance to students' lives and out, uh, um, communities outside of the classroom, but we might think about that the outcome demonstrates a relevance to students' in relationship to their professional career, why this outcome is significant. Very often, um, we consider learning outcomes in relationship to where they might fall within Bloom's taxonomy. And so here on the slide, possibly a familiar image for folks, um, a graphic represent Bloom's taxonomy of cognitive domains. 
And so you think about um, different skills, different concepts, different pieces of knowledge falling within different cognitive domains in terms of their complexity, in terms of sort of the difficulty to do the particular things. Um, so if we can think about sort of a foundational uh, cognitive domain being to remember, asking the students to remember facts, to remember particular concepts or ideas. A bit further up is to be able to understand those things, to be able to begin to contrast them against each other, to describe them, to classify them, and kind of more and more complex, to be able to analyze, be able to evaluate something, make judgment claims, and finally to be able to create. The significance of Bloom's taxonomy when we think about learning outcomes, and especially assessment, is that it can provide a way for us to ensure that assignments are actually aligned with the course learning outcomes. And so we want to think about which cognitive domain a particular outcome might fall under. And again, they can fall under more than one, certainly, but trying to make sure that the assignment actually is in alignment with that cognitive domain. So if the cognitive domain is asking students to apply particular concepts, um, to use a set of instructions to do something, we want to make sure the assignment is in a similar category of asking students to apply rather than just sort of remembering something. And so to look at a few examples of outcomes to kind of pinpoint and look at what is effective about how they're written. And so the first outcome on this slide, um, students will describe abnormal physiological responses to be aware of in patients with cardiac dysfunction. And so in this case, we want to think about, okay, is it measurable? Can you actually observe this outcome? We have our action verb describe, and we can witness someone describing something. They can describe it um, in a presentation, in a class discussion, in an essay, and kind of an open-ended question on an exam. So describing something we can actually witness and measure. Um, is it specific? And so it's specifying what particular they're going to be describing, the abnormal physiological responses. And this one's helpful in the sense of it does have something that kind of demonstrates its relevance. It mentions to be aware of in patients, which certainly is tied to the concept of what they're actually being asked to do. But also for students in this particular course, it sets up a little bit of the real world context of how they'll be using this in interaction with patients. To go down to a second example, students will be able to play on the keyword major and minor scales, including natural, harmonic, and melodic forms, the primary triads and keys to two sharps and flats. And so again, we have a main verb to play, students are actually doing something um, that can be measured, can be observed. It's quite specific in the sense of some context or set up of what they're playing particularly, um, the instrument they're using as well. Um, so it's given a, a helpful specificity to it. On the flip side then, to look at a few ineffective examples, um, outcomes that have a bit of more room for improvement in how they're written. So the first one, students will learn the programming language Python. Similar to the second one, if students will know the elements of the periodic table, the challenge is the way the outcome is written doesn't give a sense to instructors or students how that will actually be measured and demonstrated. And so there's different ways that we can see somebody learn programming language. They might be applying that programming language to code something, um, to create some sort of program, to create some sort of site. Um, Similarly, with the second outcome, their students will know the elements of the periodic table. Well, they might be able to identify them among several choices. They might be able to just recite and remember to find several of them. But we want to think about, again, aid students and faculty both, making sure those are measurable outcomes. And then the third one there, students will define the main periods of what is considered classical music and articulate their similarities and differences while also, um, or sorry, while applying the classifications to analyze their influence on contemporary musical genres. The challenge there, as you can tell from my reading it just now, is that there's a lot packed into that particular outcome. Um, just even visually, it's much, much longer um, than others on the slide. And the challenge being that it combines several different components that are likely gonna be um, demonstrated separately by students. Um, things that'd be much better off separated out into several chunks rather than all combined into one single long outcomes. 